In this video, I'll be talking about tips and advice for YouTube makers. I don't consider myself to be an expert on this stuff at all, but I've been on YouTube for over five years now, and I've learned a lot along the way, and I frequently get asked for help and advice, so that's why I'm making this video. I've got a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. Most importantly is simply make good content that is going to make people watching A, want to see more of your videos, and B, click on the subscribe button. My personal opinion is that I think a good way to do that is to make videos that add value for anyone watching. You can do that by imparting your own knowledge, experiences, opinions, tips, tricks, whatever it might be in the video, because if people learn something while they're watching, they're more likely to want to come back and see more from you. Now it's true that there are some really popular maker channels that don't have any narration or talking in them. Some really good channels, some of which just rely on sped up or time-lapsed video footage. But personally, and this is just my opinion, I don't think that makes for a very engaging video. There's one channel like that that people keep recommending to me and I've checked it out a few times and that particular maker is extremely talented, a much better woodworker than I could ever be. But the videos just don't retain my interest because I'm not learning or discovering anything about that maker's thoughts or experiences, so I end up watching something else. Another thing I personally think is really important is don't waste viewers' time. I like to make my videos as short and concise as possible. I want people to get the maximum amount of value or entertainment in the minimum amount of time when they watch my videos. I believe that the reason the younger generations are no longer interested in watching television and far more interested in watching YouTube is because YouTube videos are usually less bloated and long-winded than most of the stuff that's on TV. Aside from maybe one or two shows on TV, I only watch YouTube now and in until the people who make TV shows realize that their current old-fashioned format no longer appeals to most people under the age of, say, 50, TV will have no future whatsoever. If I'm doing a build project where I'm making something, I might use the table saw for an operation that takes me maybe 20 minutes in total in real life, but I'm only going to show maybe three or four seconds of that in the project video, enough to show people what I did, but not so much that the viewer gets bored and clicks away onto another video. Now, I know that there are examples where longer form content is popular too. Take, for example, Paul Sellers' videos on YouTube, probably one of the most well-renowned and well-regarded woodworkers on YouTube. His videos are pretty slow paced, which gives them a different appeal because they're kind of relaxing to watch. But for me, I have to be in a certain mood to want to watch one of his videos, like if I'm relaxing in the evening. Whereas any videos that are say 10 minutes long or less, I tend to want to watch sooner and more frequently. Another thing I notice frequently is people will have a long introduction to a video. And again, I think the majority of people don't want to see that or aren't interested. If you talk about what you had for breakfast for three minutes at the start of a video, yes, some of your regular subscribers who know you and are interested in what you have to say might enjoy listening to that. But a lot of people who are maybe seeing that video for the first time are probably wanting to see the video for whatever it is about, and that's why they clicked on it. Video thumbnails. Thumbnails are so important. I like to think about them as like a window display for a shop on a high street. The thumbnails for your videos are your best opportunity for getting people to click on your video and watching it. If you don't take the opportunity to make a good thumbnail, you're missing out on that opportunity of getting someone to click. I know of some channels with great thumbnails that get loads of views, even though the videos that they're releasing aren't all that great. I also know channels which have amazing video content, but very little effort has been put into the thumbnails, so those videos don't get the number of views that they deserve, which is a real shame. In my opinion, a good thumbnail should be eye-catching, punchy, with good color and contrast, and it should be of something that makes you want to watch that video. There's a rumor that the YouTube algorithm favors thumbnails with human faces in it too. I'm not sure whether that's true or not. Personally, I don't put my face in many of my thumbnails. Maybe I'm missing a trick there, who knows. Another thing that I like to do is have a consistent look to all of my thumbnails. You'll see that I always use the same font and I have my same channel branding at the left-hand side of each thumbnail. 
that's optional obviously, but I think it's useful because it strengthens the brand of my channel. And if someone's watched one of my videos before and enjoyed it, it might make them more likely to click on another one of my videos when it pops up in their feed in future. Video description and title. Using key search terms in the description of your videos and the title is really important. In the past, YouTube was set up so that you could add searchable tags to each video, but apparently that's less important than the description itself nowadays, and that's why they've buried away the tags in the video upload settings menus. Try to include keywords in the description and try to think about what people who might want to see your video might be searching for. So for example, say I made a coffee table with a drawer in it. The keywords I might try to include in the description would be things like coffee table with drawer, coffee table with storage, DIY coffee table, woodworking project, handmade coffee table, how to make a coffee table. These are the kind of things that people who want to see that video might type into the search box. Patience and perseverance. If you're just starting out making videos on YouTube, it can be so disheartening when you've put so much time and effort into making a video, only to see that the number of views and interest that the video gets is really low. But if you want to be successful on YouTube, in most situations, you need to play the long game. And that leads me on to the next point, which is doing it for the right reasons. For me personally, there were three main reasons why I started my YouTube channel. One, I was excited about sharing my projects with other people. Two, I was passionate about working with reclaimed wood and materials, and I wanted to encourage others to do that too. And three, I enjoyed the process of making videos. That was it. When I started, I wasn't concerned with number of views or number of subscribers, but when people found my videos interesting, that was really exciting, and that made me want to make more and more. I definitely wasn't in it to make money, and if making money on YouTube is your main focus, then I'd suggest you need to do something else entirely, because there are far, far easier, quicker, and better ways to make money. I'll give you an example. The dinosaur baby play gym project that I made took me about 21 hours to make, and probably about 9 hours to edit the video, so in total, let's say 30 hours. How much money has that video generated in total since it was published? 14 pounds and three pence, and that's on my channel with over 100,000 subscribers. That works out at about 47 pence per hour for the time I put into it. And the minimum wage here in the UK is over eight pounds 20 an hour. Now, I'm not saying that you can't make money on YouTube, you absolutely can, but it takes a lot of time and hard work to build things up to a point where you have a big catalog of videos that are generating ad revenue plus other streams of revenue like, for example, Patreon, a website, affiliate schemes, merchandise, whatever it might be. I've been doing this for over five years and I still haven't managed to quit my day job, so I can't stress enough. If you really want to do it, do it for the right reasons and don't let those reasons be money. Confidence. Anyone who has been watching my videos for a long while will know that I'm an introvert, that I'm not good at talking off the cuff or unscripted, and that I'm not comfortable in front of a camera. So when I started my channel, I had to find ways around all of those issues. For the first 30 videos on my channel, I just filmed some action shots of me working, and then later on I wrote a script for the video, and I recorded some narration into a microphone that I could then splice up and put over the video. Then it was time to make some cladding uprights to hide the end grain of the shiplap and protect it from the weather. Even that was a real struggle for me because I hate listening to the sound of my own voice and I just wasn't comfortable doing it. Talking to a camera was a fear that I really wanted to overcome though for the sake of my videos, so in my 31st video, I had a go at it. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how my workshop is holding up and as it's now been one year since I've built it, I thought I'd make a quick video to answer some of your questions. I looked really uncomfortable, but I kept having a go at it from that point onwards, and I got tons of comments from people on those videos telling me about how I was wooden and that I talked like a robot. And I really don't know why people feel the need to tell me that stuff, because I am my own worst critic and I am fully aware of how much of a robot I am. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, the point is I persevered, I carried on doing it, and over the course of the next 
maybe 100 videos or 200 videos. I got better and better and now even though I'm still not comfortable doing it, I think I come across much more naturally and others have told me that too, which is great. Another thing that really helped me was having a teleprompter so that I could write down exactly what I want to say in my videos and simply read it out to the camera and that's what I'm doing right now with this video too. I have a couple of videos about how I made my teleprompters. They're pretty easy to make and I'll leave a link to those in the description box below too. So my advice would be if you're not comfortable talking to a camera just film what you're doing and maybe try narrating the video instead either verbally into a microphone or even putting some text on screen but just know that some people are going to be put off by that as they might not want to read a video as well as watch it. So narrating is a good thing to add in my opinion. If you make a few videos like that, maybe one day you'll feel like having a go at talking to a camera and you'll probably be a whole lot better at it than I was. And like with anything, if you keep doing something, you will get better at it. Working with brands. As you persevere with making videos and your channel starts to grow, you'll eventually get approached by brands wanting to collaborate. I'm not talking about sponsorship here, I'm talking mainly about free products. The offers that you get are likely to be quite diverse. There'll be companies that are just happy to see you use their products in one of your videos, and they'll be happy for you to incorporate and use it in a natural way and leave it entirely to your discretion, giving you full creative control about how you do that and they're just happy to work with you and help support you. I've met some really good people through working with brands that I would actually consider as friends. And if you're open to the idea of working with brands, those are the companies that I would recommend working with. At the other end of the spectrum, there'll be companies with more of a strict marketing agenda who might have specific ideas about what they want to get from you and your videos. Those are the offers to avoid, in my opinion, because if you start making videos to please brands, it's going to come across to your viewers that your main priority isn't making good content, it's getting out of YouTube whatever you can. And once again, good content is the most important thing. Never let the quality of your videos suffer because all you'll do is drive viewers and subscribers away from your channel. As well as positive experiences working with brands, I've had some really negative ones too. I'm not going to publicly name and shame those in this video, but if you're a YouTuber and you want to know the companies I've been happy to work with and the ones I'd recommend steering well clear of, drop me an email or a private message on Instagram or Facebook and I'll let you know what I've experienced so far. Working with sponsors. As far as working with sponsors is concerned, that's not something I have much experience with as I've turned down every offer I've had apart from one, mainly because most of the offers I get have no relation to the content of my channel, so they are not products that I feel I can fully endorse. Again, be authentic and know your channel's worth, and if you don't know your channel's worth, there's an online tool that can really help with that. It's called Social Blue Book. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. It's free to use, you just need to sign up, enter your YouTube channel details, and it will analyze the statistics for your channel and give you a recommended price range for things like a shout out, a direct link, and a dedicated video upload. And you can use those figures to negotiate with sponsors. I know that there are some makers who refuse to accept free tools or sponsorships or anything like that. And to those people, I applaud you, but my personal stance is that Let's face it, YouTube ad revenue leaves a lot to be desired, so we have to take advantage of some of the benefits that come our way within reason. For me, that's predominantly about accepting free, high quality tools for me to use on my projects. Tools that I really enjoy using and I'd probably never be able to afford otherwise. I'm less interested personally in taking sponsorships for mattresses, web design, software, or mobile phone games, but I'd never say never. If, for example, I quit my day job tomorrow, I'd have to consider accepting some of those offers. But I guess the main point is know your boundaries and stick to them, and don't let companies take advantage of you. Equipment. I've put this towards the end because while having a good quality camera, lenses, microphone, and video editing software is going to help you make better content, it's really not as important as you might think. Some of my favorite channels, for example, Gid Joiner, is shot on a mobile phone, which further emphasizes that good content is far more important than anything else. What I would say though is before you consider spending money on a camera, it might be worth considering audio first. Hello because bad quality audio in a video is far more likely to make someone click away from your video than the actual video quality because 
Video quality is so good nowadays, even on mobile phones, so you're still going to be able to get good footage on just about any modern camera. I've talked about the equipment that I used before in a video, so I won't talk about that now, but I'll link to that video in the description box below if you're interested in checking it out. Community. In many aspects of life, other people who are doing similar things to you within the same environment are seen as competitors. I genuinely believe that that is practically non-existent among the maker community on YouTube and Instagram, social media in general. Since I started my channel, I've been continually and consistently surprised by just how approachable, helpful, supportive, genuine and down to earth everyone is. And I think that's because the people who produce online content just want to share knowledge and experiences and learn from others. And that is a wonderful thing. I've had the pleasure of meeting, not meeting physically, but speaking online with some of the nicest people I've ever met who I now regard as good friends. So know that there is very little competition out there, just a community of like-minded people all trying to help each other out. Try to respond to those who go to the effort of commenting on your videos or sending you messages. Once your channel grows, it's going to get difficult to keep up with responding to everything, but even if it's just saying thanks or hitting the heart button to show that you've taken the time to read it is really important, I think. Obviously, there are also negative and trollish comments to contend with, especially on YouTube where there's more anonymity of those that are leaving the comments. Try not to take them to heart. If the criticism is non-constructive or if the comment is just offensive, hide that user from the channel and you'll never have to deal with their nastiness ever again and no one else will see the comments either. You will need a thick skin at times. There has been the odd comment over the years that I've found particularly upsetting, but the vast majority of negative comments that I get don't affect me at all. And if they're constructively criticizing something, I actually find those comments very helpful sometimes. Scheduling. This is something that won't work for everyone, but for me, having a schedule for uploads has been really helpful. I've maintained a weekly video upload schedule for years now, and even though it's sometimes hard to keep up with, especially back when I was working full time and making YouTube videos on the side, it's helped me to be prolific in releasing videos. But I know that working to a schedule doesn't work for everyone. Some people work best without one. So just do whatever works best for you and whatever aids your creativity the most. So I think that's about all I've got. If you've got any other tips or if you've got any questions for me, please leave them in the comments section below. I hope you found the video useful. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so via Patreon or PayPal, and there'll be links to those in the description box below. On Patreon, you can also get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.